Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and welcome to episode number 30 of our show. This week, we're sponsored by Riviera Yachts, which is celebrating its 40th year in business. Today, we present our buyer's guide to Flybridge Cruisers, plus look at the new launches from Regal, Valhalla, and Walker's Key, along with an interesting new product for outboard boat owners. Now, let's get to the news. Volvo Penta is stopping sales and marketing of their very high horsepower seven marine outboard engines effective January 1st, 2021. According to the president of Volvo Penta, the company decided that it wants to focus on sustainable propulsion systems, which it hopes to provide by 2050. Once current orders are filled, the company will phase out the V8 supercharged outboards that put out from 527 to 627 horsepower. Bubble Penta said it will continue to support seven marine customers by taking full warranty and parts responsibility for products in the field. The outboards cost from $130,000 to over $150,000, and according to a seven marine employee, there are never more than 200 units sold in any year. The brand led the way in outboard graphics and styling, as well as in horsepower and engineering sophistication. Sweden is very much supporting renewable energy, and Candela, the Swedish electric boat manufacturer, has teamed with solar energy supplier Nordsol to roll out what it describes as the world's first charging network for electric boats in the winter of 2021. At first, they plan to have five charging stations in the archipelago. Candela's first electric model, the Candela 7, is a foiling boat powered by an electric engine. Two titans of the recreational boating industry, Marine Max and Brunswick Corporation, reported continued strong sales in 2020. Marine Max, the largest recreational boat dealer in the world, has closed out its 2020 fiscal year with the highest revenue and earnings in the company's 23-year history. Revenue grew more than 29% to $398 million for the quarter ending September 30th, 2020, compared to $308 million for the same quarter last year. The increase was driven by same-store sales growth of 33% and the final fiscal revenue for 2020 exceeded $1.5 billion with all divisions of the company experiencing growth. Brunswick Corporation is the owner of Mercury Marine and several boat brands including Boston Whaler and Sea Ray. For the third quarter of 2020, Brunswick reported stronger than expected results, posting double-digit gains in revenue across all segments. At the recent Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show, Regal Marine introduced its largest outboard powered boat to date, the 42 FXO. With triple 425 horsepower Yamaha outboards, the boat measures 44 feet long overall with a 13 foot beam, and our tests have shown she hits a top speed of nearly 50 miles per hour. Because the outboards can be trimmed completely clear of the water, a family can back in close to the beach, drop the anchor, and go exploring. Her flying bridge has many seating options, and the salon and cockpit are laid out to seamlessly blend as one to create entertaining options. Below decks, her aft stateroom has a pair of twin berths that can convert to a king, plus a love seat at the foot, and the forward cabin has a queen. Be looking for our full test and features inspection videos coming soon. Powerplay Power Boats also launched a new model at the Fort Lauderdale show, the Walker's Key 30 Center Console. She reportedly hits a top speed of about 50 miles per hour with a single 450 horsepower outboard and 75 with twin 450s. With twin 200 horsepower outboards, Powerplay says the boat gets 2.4 miles per gallon at 30 miles per hour. At the helm, twin captain's chairs have folding bolsters and armrest and there is space for two large multifunction displays. Board of the console is a comfortable chaise style lounge. There's also a removable ladder for the bow that clips in place for beach reboarding. Behind the helm seats is a live well, and at the stern, there's a wide service platform between the engines and transom. The Valhalla Boatworks division of Viking Yachts has announced its largest model to date, the V46, which is due to debut in early spring 2021. The center console features a twin-step bottom designed by Michael Peters Yacht Design, plus the same signature traits introduced on the smaller Valhalla boats, including the S-shaped shear, double chines, and a tumble home transom bustle. Inside the console is an air-conditioned cabin that has a convertible V-berth, galley, and private head. The console, helm, seat bases, and forward lounge are all on a platform raised 7 inches off the deck to improve visibility and allow for increased volume below decks. About the two rows is mezzanine seating for watching baits and entertaining. Power choices include Quad Mercury 450Rs or 400Rs or 425 horsepower Yamaha XTO offshore outboards. Anyone who has towed an outboard powered boat for a long haul over bumpy roads knows the stress that it puts on the engine and the boat's transom. 
The mean motor mount tote from DD26 Fishing is designed specifically for Mercury's new 150 horsepower four-stroke outboard. When used with DD26's steering locks, the mean motor mount tote keeps an outboard secure and supported. Made out of 6061 aluminum, the tote has custom polyurethane top and bottom interfaces molded to fit the front of the Mercury 150 and the fixed section of the transom. Trim up the engine and position the tote logo up with the 26 toward the rear. The square notches interface with the transom bracket, then simply trim the motor down until it locks into place. The mean motor mount tote fits Mercury 150 horsepower C-Pro, 4-stroke and pro XS 4-stroke outboards. Our sponsor for this week's program is Riviera Yachts, which builds cruising and fishing boats from 39 feet to 72 feet. Let's take a look at their message, especially made for Boat Test's audience. Experience the excellence of Riviera today. Over 40 years of evolution, creating over 5,650 luxury motor yachts, forever achieving higher levels of excellence and always improving our craft. From our early pioneering boats to the outstanding 21 model range of Riviera today. Five magnificent collections. The Riviera Flybridge. SUV. Sport Yacht. Sports Motor Yacht. And the classic Belize Motor Yachts. An exclusive selection of adventurers, entertainers and sports stars featuring head-turning styling, timeless luxury, advanced technology, and exhilarating blue water performance. Experience Riviera today. Sophisticated motor yachts from 39 to 72 feet. Today we explore many of the considerations consumers should make before selecting the brand and model of Flying Bridge Cruiser. They vary widely in concept and design, so that's why our buyer's guide for them is so important to watch. Many boats have flying bridges, such as large motor yachts, convertibles and trawlers, but for this buyer's guide, we will limit our discussion to boats between 30 feet and 70 feet that are used primarily for cruising and have a cockpit. Flying bridge boats built for big game sport fishing are called convertibles. Boats designed for long distance cruising at displacement speed are trawlers, and we'll examine them both in separate episodes. The Flying Bridge has been around a long time, starting in the mid-1800s on commercial steam-powered vessels. By the 20th century, virtually every naval vessel and many commercial vessels had a flying bridge above the pilot house or main bridge. By getting the commanding officer higher and outside, vision was greatly improved. In 1934, Ernest Hemingway brought a new 38-foot Wheeler Express Cruiser for $7,495. A couple of years later, he rigged his boat with one of the first flying bridges seen on a recreational powerboat. He did this in order to raise the height of eye to about 8 feet, which increased his view of the surrounding waters by 50% and allowed him to see below the surface in skinny water. Flybridge cruisers have come a long way since Hemingway's day and now they're used not only for improved visibility, but also as a place for guests to sightsee, sunbathe and be entertained. Further, enclosed flying bridges are growing in popularity as a low-cost way to add all-weather living space to a yacht. Since many builders offer both express cruisers and the flybridge cruisers on the same hull, buyers should carefully consider which option to take. The major advantages of a flybridge cruiser over an express cruiser are these. First, much greater visibility from the helm, and in some cases, both the bow and stern can be seen from the helm station. Second, depending on the model, there's generally quite a bit more entertaining space. This can take the form of more stunning areas, seating for sightseeing, and a table for dining and cocktail parties. Larger boats even have a wet bar, grill, and other amenities. 
A lot of living space is added for a relatively small upcharge over an express cruiser. Third, with the addition of a hardtop, the helm can be completely enclosed in isinglass for three-season boating and piloting in the rain. Some large models offer enclosed helms and even larger boats have what is known as a sky lounge with the helm forward. Some models eliminate the lower helm, thereby opening up more living space in the salon below. Fourth, in express cruisers, the captain stands only a few feet above the water and conditions may appear sloppy, but when viewed from the flying bridge, sea conditions take on a far milder character. Finally, there's nothing as thrilling as the view from a flying bridge day or night. All of these advantages do not come without a cost. Remember, all boats, no matter what the configuration, are a compromise. Perhaps the biggest drawback to a flying bridge cruiser is the ladder to get to the bridge. On smaller boats, they're sometimes nearly vertical because of a lack of deck space. Look for angled ladders and thwartship ladders, which are safer. Larger boats sometimes have flying steps in the cockpit or even inside the boat that are attractive and easy to climb. Or even a spiral staircase, which is the most secure in a seaway. Second, a flybridge cruiser inherently has a higher center of gravity. That means the boat will be less stable in nearly all conditions. Because flybridge boats are heavier and have more windage than their express cruiser counterparts, they're slower and burn more fuel with the same engines. For example, the 60 flybridge cruiser here that weighs 4,200 pounds more than its express sister lost about one and a half knots of top speed, but only 0.7 knots at best cruise where it burned 3.5 gallons per hour more. The advantage of flying bridge yachts is that they have greater air draft for visibility, but that becomes a disadvantage if you have low bridges to negotiate. Finally, as one would expect, flying bridge boats are more expensive than express cruisers on the same hull with the same engines. In the 1970s and 80s, traditionally designed and built flying bridges were intended for comfortable handling and safety in a seaway. Note on this 39-foot flybridge cruiser the high bulwarks amidships with fiberglass rails aft to make the bridge more secure. Inside, we see that its bulwark is about a foot above the seat, the frame of the wind deflector is 30 inches off the deck, and aft the seat back is 28 inches off the deck. At the opposite end of the spectrum, we find a flybridge cruiser that was designed for entertaining, sunning, and fair weather. Note that when the captain is standing at the wheel, he must stoop slightly to touch it. The advantage of this design is lower air draft and the sleek look of the vessel with a minimum of top hamper. Sight lines forward typically allow the bow to be seen in this flybridge design. Most flybridge cruisers have their helm forward for better visibility in front of the boat and to free up room for entertaining behind the helm. There's no one best place for the helm. Some boats have them to starboard, others to port, and some right on the center line. No matter where the helm is placed, a second pair of eyes looking forward is always important, and this allows the companion to take part in the piloting. Now let's look behind the helm at the entertaining area. First, be aware that every flybridge is designed to hold only so much weight. Overloading the flybridge can be dangerous. All seats are intended to be filled, so the more seats there are, the greater the weight capacity. Hard tops over the helm and passenger area protect from UV, wind, and rain, and also permit installing isoglass for three-season boating. The ultimate flying bridge is fully enclosed for four-season boating. Usually, this means that the lower helm will be eliminated, creating more living space below. On larger boats, it can become what is called a sky lounge, with what amounts to a second salon, with wet bar and many amenities. Well, that's our look at the major aspects of flying bridge boats that consumers should be considering before buying. Be sure to see our other videos on express cruisers and motor yachts. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.